Hello everybody and welcome to the video where I'll be showing you how I do feeding and maintenance on all my ant colonies. My current routine is every Sunday I do feeding of sugar, protein and hydrating the nest and making sure all of them have water. Then two days later I remove the food, two days later I feed them only protein and one day later I remove the food and then we're back to Sunday once again. And today is Sunday so let's do maintenance on all the colonies which includes feeding sugar, protein and water. And let's start with the two colonies outside the VIP. I've just added a little bit of springtails to all the setups to see how the different setups cope with this springtail dirt. Uh, so that's why we have a little bit of weird dirt here and we also have a little bit of dirt here. Uh, as, the, as it dries out, I'll clean it out and see what happens. But let's start to do maintenance on these two colonies. So firstly here we have the Nova Messer Cockerelli and what we need to do here is hydrate around three of the four nests. I like to give a little bit of variation to which nest I hydrate to see how the colony copes up and I think I'll un not hydrate this one. So I'll hydrate these three nests today. And here we have one pipette with water and push it all the way in. One pipette here, one pipette here. So one of the main reasons why I don't hydrate this nest that often is because when I put water here and just fill it up, you can just see the water just comes flying out the bottom. And last time I showed you this, a few people were like, oh, it's because you don't hydrate it that often. And yeah, there's a few different reasons. Either way, no matter what I do, this always happened. And it's happened every time for a long time. Uh, and just it just... <laughs> It's weird because sometimes the ants have brewed down here. It's very rarely at this stage, but at one point they had brewed down here, and it also looks like it's like rotting a little bit. It actually looks not too not too healthy. Uh, but yeah, it takes about half an hour for the water actually to get sucked in, meaning ants sometimes have drowned in this in the past. And with that, the three nest plus the white white tongue nest here has all been hydrated. This is of course the ant farm supply nest, and this over here is the steady ants white tongue nest. Now we just need to feed them. So you may be wondering why I have a little bit of gaffer tape. Well, the other week, the nest just, it, it just cracked. Um, I'm unsure what really happened here, but you can just see we, we had a little crack form. And uh, yeah, and because this lid here, here warps when there isn't weight on it, um, the ants will eventually escape if there's not weight on it because the lid starts bowing upwards. That's why I have these camera lenses here. Um, but yeah, now there's no lid and you can a little bit see the, the crack that just formed out of nowhere and I saw the ants were very interested in before I put the gaffer tape because they could sense the airflow I believe so yeah let's just put a little bit of gaffer tape but yeah this here is the art world um I do cleaning uh, twice a week and uh, yeah as you can see this is still some of the springtail soil so it was a little bit hard to clean them this week but basically I put well I'll do a, I'll do a cleaning video later this week so you can see that but once again it's important to check the water supply and the water supply here looks very nice and I mean, because we'll do a follow-up video either way, I have tried feeding the Nova Cockerelli some of the seed mix here from Ads HQ, but let's just try that again and see what actually happens if we do this follow-up video in a couple of days. So with the spoon out, let's just give them a little bag of seeds here and just put it directly in one of the corners over there. And uh, I'll just give them a little bit of each. So these here were the organic millet seed mix right here from Ads HQ. I mean, these are all from Ads HQ. And um, let's see with one of these. Once again, we have a little nice little spoon included here. I do believe these were the seeds I tried last time. And I don't think they had a big, massive interest in the seeds, but we'll, we'll, it wasn't too documental because I just kind of fed them and I cleaned them and I didn't really, I forgot to really check on whether the seeds were fed or not. And then finally, we have these power ant seeds and let's also just, let's give a little, little, little cup of that. Um, then in a couple of days, once I do the cleaning video, we'll see if there's happened anything with the seeds. Because of the size of the colony, I feed them jelly as sugar sauce. Uh, now they can't take a whole jelly pot, so I'm just going to cut this into a little bit of a smaller piece. And we have a little bit of jelly right here, and there you go guys, jelly for you! And you can see here, it doesn't take long before the jelly is getting covered, it's about 30 seconds later. Uh, now. Unbelievably, they still are not able to handle a full jelly because they're just not fast at taking it down. But it doesn't take long before it's getting covered. And uh, yeah, I really need to clean this up. I'll show you the cleaning process and why there are sometimes these smaller bits remaining once I'm done. And finally, we just need to feed the colony a little bit of protein. So over here, my current setup, this is where I'm keeping my roaches because it's cat safe. And I mean, this lid doesn't matter whatsoever, but well, I'm moving to a new apartment and if they see this, I want them to think it's 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 all right. And regarding how much I feed this colony, this is the colony I at the moment feed the most. So this here was a medium-sized 
Dubia coming in. So even though this colony is actually one of the colonies with currently very little amount of brood, this is still the colony I've fed the most uh, because in the past I've had a ton of brood and I don't want to do anything to hinder that. So you can see here they're getting a lot of protein and generally I feed them like four to five adult Dubia roaches. A little bit less today, but again, they don't have much brood at the moment. But in just a few minutes, they'll be fully on town on all of this protein. And that's it for the Nova Mesa Cagarelli, one of the colonies that takes the longest time because they're big. Once again, Ant from Supply, Aesthetic Ants, Aesthetic Ants, Colony from Ants Davy, and it is the Nova Mesa Cagarelli. Next over here, we have the Polyrachis Dives Colony. It is a fully ant cube setup and the colony is also from ant cube. And as you can see, I added springtails and when I added the springtails a little bit, I've hit the water tower here. So I'll start by just cleaning the water tower. And here we go. The water tower and the feeding platform here is a little bit more clean. And what we're dealing with here is a Polyrachis Dives Colony and I have no clue how big they actually are. So I tend to just give them a very random amount of food. This here is one and a half Dubia Roach in the medium size. And I mean, I am most likely overfeeding them, but I mean, it's just a waste of food. I don't really care if they need more food. Well, they have it right here. So it's only the Nova Mesa Cagarelli and the naturalistic setup over here. I actually feed jelly. All the rest of my colonies are getting this currently. This is the Formi Pure, is it called over Ant Nectar? Formi Pure Ant Nectar from Wakushi. Um, what I like about this is you for once get quite a large bottle. I've in the past used a lot of sugar snaps, but the thing with sugar snaps, apparently they're getting bigger bottles now, but in the past at least, the bottles were like half or a third of the size, and because it was a lot more fluid, I like, you could very easily just empty a whole bottle with one cup. Well, it depends on how much you feed, but this is a lot much, it's, it's, it's hard to show, it's a lot more syrup cons consistency, um, and generally I just feed them a little bit less, and because it's a bigger bottle, uh, yeah, this is this is what I use at the moment, and this is the Wakushi Formi Pure and Nectar. And the way I feed them the Formi Pure sugar here is very simple. I normally take a little bit of cotton, put a little bit of water on the cotton because it, it makes the cotton suck a little bit more. And then I just take the Formi Pure and just give them a few drops, like three drops for the polyragas here. Should be okay. It sucks them quite nice. Let's let's give them a fourth one right there. All right, and let's let's feed that then. No, hang on, hold for a sugar head. Let's just give them a little bit more. I, I, I like I like overfeeding all my colonies. It may be need I'm wasting more of this, but I just know that all the colonies are getting a lot of what they need. And you can see here the polyragas are already discovering their food slow and steadily. And there they go. They've also got a little bit of sugar on cotton. And the simple reason for fooding sugar on cotton is just it's a lot harder for the ants to drown. And you can see they're slowly but surely discovering the food. Um, by the way, I'll do a rundown of all the colonies and their reactions to the food in the end of the video, but we can just see the first worker here, noticing the Formi Pure here. Yes, yes, that's some nice sugar for you right there. Mm, 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 mm. With that, it's time to take all of the colonies inside the Viv. And of course, Wakushi is working on making a rack so you can carry these colonies all out at once and put them all on top of each other. Uh, I generally just like to disturb them less and then to take them all out at once uh, because it's very easy to take them all out. Here we have all the colonies and with all of the colonies placed up here it's time to do a little bit of the maintenance so here we have the Campanota singularis i do a little oh i was a little bit of a bad removal of the camera or the acrylic here i do a little check here we have about a pile of five eggs which is very lovely and uh, now this was very overhydrated last week so i'm not going to hydrate them nest this week uh, these gypsum blocks here are keeping the humidity for a very long time but yeah, I'll just do them. You know, this is an ant channel, so just, just show the ants a little bit more so you can actually see what's going on. Can we put it right here? No reflections. Now you can see this is the And you can see, even looking at the gypsum here, it, it still looks a little bit shiny. Uh, look easier to see in real life, but you can see here some of the eggs here. That was another one walking, walking around with eggs. But yeah, I'm going to skip the hydration this week, and I'm just going to give them some protein and sugar. So again, I'd say I'm pretty much overfeeding all my colonies, but here we have the roach here. This is a medium dubia roach. They only have a few eggs at the moment, but who cares? Now they have a ton of protein. At one point, Basic Ants, uh, the YouTuber, pretty much told me how protein poisoning is not as bad as I initially thought, and it's not really a thing at all. I'm just gonna cut this roach in one more piece because it's moving around so much, and for a young colony like this, it's not needed. Generally, the reason I cut the roaches down the middle is that is how you serve the spine cords. So that's how you turn off all of the vibration. So what I did here is I just, uh, I, I, I apparently just missed it a little bit. So I just cut it again. 
Now this is a very young colony, or well they're not young because they're si they have a good size, but they're very skittish as you can see, and they're not at all coming out even though they've just been fed. But, but yeah, I'm gonna put the lid back on, hitting the small grooves, what are they? They're right here, here we are, and I'm gonna put the red shielding back here, and I'm gonna take the colony and take it away. Okay, so just uh, I just accidentally hit this with the, with the nest, so my hand just botched it off, and now we have some cockerellies running around. So let me just uh, pick them all up and take them home again. Yeah, it's also a point. It's also a point I've made in a previous video. These magnets are no, hang on, I think it was a podcast, but these magnets are really nice to work around with, uh, but they're also almost a little bit too easy to disconnect. Here we go. There's one more worker running around. I'll probably find. She's right here. Here we go. Um, yeah, at one point I was lifting when I took the nest in and out of the VIF. I was lifting from beneath here and because of the magnets coming down the middle here, the nest <laughs> disassembles like this <laughs> uh, because they're not strong enough so you can lift them, which it was my mistake. I forgot it was magnets. <laughs> so a little bit of an inconvenience there. But again, it's not very often that you move around these setups. But yeah, to those thing about moving them around, I would recommend that you put a bit of wood underneath so you have something a wooden block underneath that you can lift up instead of relying on the magnets to keeping it all together. Either way, let's continue the feeding. All right, but we just have another colony here. This is the golden bull ants. This is the Mamesia fulvipes. And as you can see, she's also getting covered with springtails as intended um, to see how that all works. And you can see she's just, she's just chilling, man. The girl is stuck as a picture. <laughs> all right, let's feed her. And you may be asking, oh, well, you feel doing a live feed here. And no, I don't live feed any of my colonies. Uh, well, I may feed the stigmatoma live today, but generally I don't live feed any of my colonies. Uh, what I've noticed is the bull ants really just, they, 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 they don't require live feeding at all. Um, last week, uh, I actually gave her a pre-killed cricket. She didn't touch it whatsoever. And I gave her this road shear wave and just see all of the juices are just sticking out. And she went straight for the juices after ignoring the cricket for half an hour and it was pre-killed but it was still wiggling a little bit around but she didn't mind that she wanted the protein directly fresh so you can see her actually ignoring the protein and it's a little bit more curious to watch why there's no lid on top of her but hang on yeah well you have such a big protein part and you went for the small thing now nah, there we go that is what we want to see that's a heavy bull and keeper no live feeding required just a sauce directly into the flesh um it seems because it's so open, well, I mean, I can't say this is my words because it's pretty much what Kushu told me this from his experience. Um, but when, when, the, when the wounds or when the inside of the roach is just exposed like this, it's just like they just go crazy for it. And I can't say anything, but I agree. So yeah, this is really what I want to see. This is such a beautiful queen, man. I'm, I'm, I'm loving her and I'm so happy that she's not dead yet. Um, she's still without eggs, but man, oh man, is she a calming and beautiful queen uh, from Ants HQ, by the way. And of course, where we have protein, we also give a little bit of sugar. You can see she's actually very focused and uh, very easy to uh, to clean and feed right here. She's just too focused on the food here. Once again, the Formi Pure, some cotton, works well, very easy. Let's go on to the next colony. And just before that, um, I thought about hydrating the nest, but I think I'll wait one more week uh, because again, the other seems to be have been quite heavily hydrated. So I'll, I'll give all of these new nests because I got all of these last week and a few of them got overhydrated. So I'll just give them all one more week to kind of dry out. By the way, people may be asking, hey, why don't you feed them uh, water? And I mean, the way I actually feed the colonies water is both through the gypsum here being wet enough for them to lick, um, but also in case of the feeders. So the feeders here are drinking water and you can see all of this fresh things here and there's also a little bit of water in the form of pure because I give water and there's also sugar but basically this is how I feed my colonies water so I don't actually give them access to water supply it may be my big mistake but well it's been working for almost a year and a half now with most of my colonies so the bigger colonies like the Novometer Cucarelli I of course give them a water source uh, but many of these smaller colonies I don't I just make sure that they get uh, water through stuff like cotton so I'll also feed her a little bit of water on the cotton uh, on the protein feeding later in the week, I'll just give her protein and cotton with water. You can see here the pile is getting smaller. We are moving forward with the ant keeping. With the ant keeping, what am I saying? With uh, the maintenance here. This here's the next queen here. 
this here is the Uptown Temacus. Um, chef here is what I'm calling it. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, you probably will. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, this is also a queen where I've introduced the springtails um, to give a little bit of more of a bioactive vibe to them. There's dirt, there's springtails, there's humidity. This is quite bioactive in my opinion, and yet not at all. It's, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a mix. Yeah, the queen is still without any eggs as far as I can see, but yeah, let's feed her. All right, so as you can see, I did decide to give her both a little cricket and also a roach piece. This is simply because I'm still trying to figure out what she likes the most. And there we go, a little bit of sugar for the lady once again. Water, cotton, foamy pure, that's the way I go. This means we can pack up the colony, put on the lid. Where is the grooves? Where is the grooves? Well, Kushi should really make this easier. Here we are, here we are. Here we are. There we go. Of course, this is a twisted lock, so now it's locked. Uh, but you can see right there on the side, right there, you just need to match that here. So it goes down. And there we are. The reason I'm giving them specifically so they have a lot of life is because they tend to want a live feed. Uh, but I don't like live feeding. So this is pre kill but moving around. And next here, we have my other Octane Tamakas. Um, this is the colony where I have absolutely no clue how to say it. So this here is the red headed Trap Joanne Queen. And if we just take a look at her, this nest was severely overhydrated last week. And as you can see, it's been outside the VIF for about 10 minutes or so. So um, that's why it's starting to become a little bit misty to see the bubbles are forming. As she's the last colony to be fed from the VIF from the first batch. And I'll put her out. She finally decided to go ahead and settle in here. So yeah, you can see she has a nice little egg pile right there. Uh, her larvae sadly didn't make it, but she was quite confused the first week uh, because she was living out here. She didn't really want to come in here because it was too humid. So again, that was on me. I overhydrated. Uh, but she has laid some more eggs, but uh, yeah, let's feed her. A little bit later, she has a little piece of a cricket. She has some roach and she has some sugar. Again, both of the trout giants. I'm still a little bit unsure what they prefer, so they're getting both. But yeah, put back on the lid, twist it, and we're good to go. Uh, hopefully within not too long, I should have the rack here. So it's a little bit, of, instead of I'm pushing them all together like this, I can just... It's a rack, it's easier to carry. You can just carry it like this, I believe. So, so that is the first part of the VIF. Then we'll take the next part of the VIF. I still need to feed the stigmatoma, but I'll do that, um, like I said, in a short. Uh, but basically they get the exact same treatment, except I'm feeding the stigmatoma mealworms, as they seem to uh, be a fan of getting mealworms, is what I've been told. Once again, I'm listening to what people say, so if you have any feedback to how I'm feeding my colonies, be sure to let me know and I'll consider your feedback and maybe I'll change how I do it. Closing the VIF here, feeding the next two colonies. All right, firstly, here we have the Manica rubida. Let's open up that setup. You know the gist. The Manica here is actually one of the colonies that's getting uh, a lot of sugar compared to their size. Uh, but you can also see an immediate response from the colony. They are sugar lovers. Um, yeah, seconds later, <laughs> the Manicas are all over the food. Still need to feed them protein, however. Here's the first little bit, and I'm going to give them another one. All right, so that's them all sorted, at least food-wise. And I'm not going to lie, I, I do love feeding the manicas because you can just see how immediate of a response they have. Like, this has been in here for less than a minute, and they're just all over. Protein have been in here for less than a minute, and will work as they're coming in. It's a, it's a very quick, everything is moving here. Uh, the nest here, sadly, is looking worse and worse as we go along. Um, I'm a little bit unsure what's actually happened, but yeah. At least now there's spring tails in here, so I don't know if they'll clean it or what they'll do. Uh, but yeah, everything in here is just looking uh, very weird with all of these uh, dots. Of course, there's spring tails here, but that's all not all the dots. There's also, it's just a very dirty nest for some reason. Uh, but yeah, you can see here, the queen is looking very nice in here. And let's also just give it a little bit of water because, well, it's the weekly maintenance. Here we go, grabbing the pipette. One chamber, there we go. All nice and sorted, and on to the next colony. Next here we have the brand new Harps colony, and uh, last I checked, they just got their first little egg. Hang on, there we go. A little bit hard to get these off sometimes. Well, at least with without proper nails and stuff like that. So curious to see if they've laid any more eggs or not. Let me just do a little. Check. They have. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? There's two eggs now. So yes, slow and steadily, they are making uh, their comeback. I got them without brood, and you can see, well, it's the colony I got last week from Man's HQ. 
without brood and you can see the first two eggs have arrived. What's also quite interesting is uh, I put dirt in the setup just like every other setup and uh, they've gone ahead and removed every bit of dirt. Here we are, that's one chamber full. But out here in the outwall there is again the residue of the springtail soil which I just added the other day. Now there's actually a cricket living out here somewhere. Uh, well, that cricket is def that's definitely a dead cricket. But yeah, I gave them three crickets and they only t took two of them down. But either way, it's not a cricket day today. It is the good old fashioned pre-kill food. Oh, but they're Harbignathers. They need to be live fed. Well, Johnny Johnson, I don't care. I don't feed them life. What I do is I do like every other colony and I pre-kill the food. Now I took a little bit of too big a roach here, but I'm just gonna cut it into some smaller pieces right there. And what I actually tend to do I just take the food here. I'm gonna cut it into a little bit of a small piece. There we are. Just gonna put it right there at the nest entrance. Just gonna put the same here. You you can just come here at the nest entrance. And what they'll do is they'll come out, take the food, and they'll drag it in and they'll eat it. Do Hapignathos venisus need sugar? Well, I don't care. Here they have uh, they have some sugar. If they don't take it, I'll take them out. If they like it, well, they got some sugar. It's time to grab the more spicy stuff. We have the bullet end first. The Parabonera Clavata, and once again, I just, I love that I can pick this up like this. Just pick it up and uh, come up and uh, place it down. Alrighty, there's the Clavata colony here, and let's just see how they're doing. Uh, recently, I saw some great news. Very nice that she's reacting less and less to actually being disturbed. That's great, because Oliver likes to disturb his aunt, because he's a guy who records everything. Uh, but we do have some great news, because the Clavata queen have laid not one, but two tiny eggs. Now, apparently, from what I've talked with other ant keepers of Clavata, eggs is not the hard part to get, it's hard to get larvae. But yeah, so far, so good. Two eggs, lovely. Once again, chamber filling completely up. This is a huge gypsum block, so I'm just giving a full top up uh, because I know it, it's a massive block. She can handle it. If it becomes too humid, she can go closer to the next exit. But as you can see, she's placed the furthest away from the next exit to be very happy in here. She's also moved the dirt a little bit around, which is lovely. But yeah, let's feed her. Because I know I'll be doing a follow-up video, this is how I feed my clavata. Just take the cricket, oh, there we go. All, oh, not, that's not a cricket, that's a roach. Two pieces right here. Hot Holifer, how do you know she's taking it? Well, sometimes I don't want to disturb them too much, but uh, I, I can't check tonight to see if she's taking it. But what I'll see is two days later, it's magically appeared out here so I can take it out. Meaning she knows that it's there, she's touched it. And like I said with the bull ants earlier, it's way easier to confirm that there's food in there for them or that there is food when there's just flesh in their face, because when there's flesh in their face, they just start eating. Holifer, Holifer, they don't need sugar. They don't need sugar. Why are you feeding sugar to a clavata? Are you a complete noob? Well, if she doesn't like the sugar, she can just not take the sugar. As simple as that. Now she has the option to get some sugar. For some reason, these uh, deeper nest is not working very well with my uh, light from there. <laughs> it's just not working too well, but uh, yeah, gonna handheld this baby once again. We have to sit about there. I'm gonna give her protein and sugar like any others. This here is the queen. You can see here one larvae has spun the cocoon. So I'll do an update on that in not too long. She has decided to have a little bit of food garbage over here, which is really a bad thing. But good thing we have spring springtails who can uh, clean it out because this is why I wanted the spring tails because when we have colonies doing stupid stuff like putting food over here The spring tails will come and make sure it doesn't go bad. Yeah Because I know the cocoons are spinning at the moment and it's generally quite humid in there I'm just gonna give it half a chamber of water One thing I can say for sure with bull ants is they love their sugar here we go, a little bit of sugar. But why is there dirt right there, Holifer? Well, it's the spring tails. I've had a spring tails to all the setup. I said that earlier, god damn. So uh, feeding sugar here, or feeding the protein here went all wrong, but you know the story at this point. Uh, to make sure they pull that and get her, I mean, I don't really mind that she gets her sugar. She's loving the sugar, but I'm more concerned that the larvae get the protein. So I simply just block the door off with the protein. And what does she do? Well, she grabs it and then she cleans up afterwards. Now here we have. The Tetramorium bicarbonate, and the name is on the other side. I thought the name was there, but it's on the other side. You can see here we have water. It's not turned yellow yet. It's only a couple of days old. I changed it because the ants are not that happy. Uh, they like to drown in it. Uh, but you can see here, the lovely Tetramorium bicarbonate, and the forever fight with getting the ants off the lid is still ongoing. I'm just gonna clean this feeding this year, and then I'm gonna feed them. All right, feeding once again, a little bit more protein to this colony than I'd usually go for with uh, a colony of this size. 
that's also what I said in the latest video. What is up with these camera angles? Uh, but that, that's, that looks nice. Uh, yeah, about three roaches or something, and you can immediately see we have yeah, queens just everywhere. It is the bicarinatum, of course. So that is typical bicarinatum stuff. All right, coming in, putting it right there, and putting the lid back again. All right, we just need to feed the viv, the roaches, and then we'll do a quick look at all of the colonies. For the viv here, of course, we start by removing all of the lights. I mean, generally, I actually don't need to remove all of the lights today because I only feed this section. I just throw food over in this section. But because I want to show you how it looks, I'm just going to remove everything. So firstly, I remove the lights up here. Then we have the fan here, making sure it's not getting all misty in there. Once that's down, we can grab the first lid here. Get that out. Just going to put that here. And because the Nikos keep escaping through um, through the waterfall uh, cable, I've actually turned the waterfall off temporarily because well, I don't quite know what to do about that yet. Well, I don't know if Fluent will work and stuff like that. We have a single layer worker here. We need to feed the snake in the background, so let's get to it. So firstly, I'm just going to take the remainder of this uh, sugar here. Uh, I think this is actually the Ant's HQ sugar, I'm not sure, but it's uh, the jelly either way. So I'm going to drop the jelly there. Going to drop some more there. This is definitely not been. This is just definitely not my jelly because normally these just come flying out. I'm uh, just gonna push it a little bit all over the setup um, because I realized at one point that that jelly fell in the water. I'm gonna take that out. Um, but I realized at one point if you get one jelly in there, the singulars and the Nikos will not be too happy. Uh, because the singulars want the jelly, the Nikos want the jelly, and now that it's put a little bit all over this place. Uh, I won't see any of these fighting happening, and that is documented by Holifer himself. It's not something I'm just saying. So how much do I feed to such a massive setup? Well, there's four active colonies living in here, and I like to say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a very big dubia right here. Um, so a big dubia for the Nikos, a big dubia for the Singularis, and a big dubia for the Manica rubida, and then I throw it all over the place. So we have like two or three big dubias in this area and one over there. So I just kind of, I just kind of take off it and just drop it in there. So just uh, throw it a little bit all over the place. So what do you feed the snake? Well, I feed them pretty much uh, a, quite at this point, a big baby mouse, a big pinky uh, or a big rat maybe, uh, still in the pinky stage covered in cat food. So it's frozen. I run it under a little bit of water and you can see the snake over there and of course I don't hand feed it I just put it over there and generally the snake takes it within a few hours and it's actually quite a lot of food for a snake of this size so therefore feed I well I don't I don't know too much about snakes to be honest but in the beginning I fed one small pinky a week and now I've upgraded to these bigger sizes I'm a little bit unsure now I'm feeding like once every two weeks or so uh, because it's, it's absolutely huge the pinky compared to the snake uh, I mean, the snake is, as you can see, quite calm with me at this stage, which is very lovely. It's insanely fast when it's actually moving around when it wants to be fast. Uh, and it's definitely one of the things I really enjoy following inside the massive ecosystem. Uh, but yeah, the colony has now been fed. We have sugar here. We also have protein right next to them. And slowly the different colonies are discovering the food. And I almost forgot, of course, we also need to hydrate this entire setup because we have naturalistic things. We have plants and all of this. I may need to cut this one here. I don't know how to cut these. So I just cut them very roughly, as you can see. <laughs> I'm not a plant expert. Maybe I just need to pull them out or something. Let me know, how, how do you cut that? Should you just cut it like I've done there? Or what do we do? Because it's getting too large. Uh, but yeah, hydrating the entire setup as well. Would you take a look at that? <laughs> I've just, I'm, I'm still, I'm still watering everything. Not only do we have one of these huge isopods out looking around, which I rarely see, and the snake just went up and just, uh, oh, yeah, waiting for, we are going for a different attack angle here. Well, I mean, if you could just pick up your pace, uh, the viewers could have something to see, which I actually also myself haven't seen in quite some time. So I just go up and grab that thing right now. I know you're a hungry girl or boy. What do I know? Uh, guys, how can you tell? Some, someone? How can you tell? <laughs> yep, that's gonna be it for this time lapse. It's uh, pulling it down. I mean, to be to be quite honest, 
it's not even that big the mouse anymore compared to the snake it's really grown fast over the past well after i've updated the food to size it's really started to grow a lot faster i know this is the only thing in my entire end room that isn't ants that i really really take interest in following um potentially i'm becoming a snake man one day who knows well probably not but either way that's a long way down girl oh boy i still don't know <laughs> Lid and everything is back again. I'll end off with how I do my roaches, but let's just check on how the colonies are doing now. Yeah, as you can see, there's a very well surprisingly response to the jelly here. A ton of workers and queens are out here looking at the jelly. I mean, we do have a nice response over here at the protein as well, with the uh, workers sitting and uh, fighting all the way around. Um, so yeah, once again, these ants never, 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 never seem to do a bad response. They always have quite a nice response to food in general. And it's just insane how many queens there are absolutely everywhere. So the bicarbonate Adam colony is also inside again. And uh, yeah, if we just start by looking here at the bull ant, you can see she's already taking some of the food inside. Here's the roach head right now. And what you'll do over the next 15, 20 minutes or so is you'll either drag this in or out depending on what she wants. And uh, then she'll finally go for that sugar in the end. Uh, but yeah, the first piece have been brought home. You can see here the bullet ant is very active. So yeah, what what she been up to? Well, she's already dragged this piece of food inside. So yeah, very clearly the ants don't need live food whatsoever uh, because she's just gone out and dragged the first part of the food in. I think I gave her two pieces, but yeah, you can see she's such a big active queen. I do, I do love her, man. I do love her, but uh, yeah, she's in the middle of taking her food in. So she's just come. She's got a little good good see with that. Are you just gonna drink a little bit? Yeah, guys, just gonna drink a little bit. This is just what I love watching because then I know, then I know with all certainty that she's getting protein. And sometimes in the past when I fed crickets and stuff like that, the crickets would just suddenly pop up again. I'm like, hang on, you didn't kill the cricket; it's still alive. That's not a worry here because yeah, it's very clear. She takes it into the nest, she eats it, and she pushes it out again afterwards. The hapignathas over here have twice been very slow at taking the food in. When I say slow, it's been like a few hours, like five to ten hours before I came back to see that they'd actually brought the protein home. They do bring the protein home like the other colonies, they just take a very slow time. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know if they've even realized there's food out there yet. And I can say the same with the Singularis. Um, I've actually fed them all three times I've fed them now. I've, I've not seen a response from them at all whatsoever. I mean, they may just come one worker out feeding at night or something. But it's been very hard to confirm whether they've actually been feeding or not. I was just about to say, is the bull ant laid an egg? But uh, that's just a rock, right? Surely that's just a rock. But uh, yeah, I mean, we've always seen her. We've always seen her. Uh, she's been out drinking sugar and protein while I've been doing the maintenance. And you saw her get a little bit of that protein earlier. And she's just uh, redesigning her home just slightly at the moment. And both the trap jaws have not done anything what I can see off. But uh, they may have been out looking. But uh, they're just sitting in attack mode. And sitting in attack mode <laughs> so uh, yeah they're both still very sensitive uh yeah last time the chef queen did bring the cricket inside and uh, i did see the <clears throat> red-headed trap jaw uh, go out and drink from the roach now what's this all about i don't think i've ever seen this before this is insane there's no dives out Normally there would be like 15 workers out here. I don't know if it's just because I've been slow enough, missed their initial response, but what? <laughs> Where are they? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they discovered the food quite quickly, but apparently that, that, that was not the right day to look at the food. The cockerellis though, they are busy as ever. They are, yeah, one piece here, one piece here. And as we go through, you can see there's just a ton of workers out. I mean, again, this jelly, I gave them, that's that's a very small pile of jelly. And I bet you, now you know what, they may be able to handle this entire thing, but it's just uh, like 25% of a jelly they got. And maybe in two days time they've taken care of it, maybe not, but you can just see how many workers we have. Uh, but yeah, there's a ton of workers out here in the art world. Seed response. How to see, we have, we have workers playing around with the seeds. We'll just have to see if they put it in a trash area or not. Technically, they, they don't have a trash area. What what I do is I take all of that trash and I push it in the corner and then I clean it out. But they don't have a trash zone, which is a little bit annoying. But you can just see, yeah, there's a ton of ton of workers out here. Uh, by the way, guys, before you're like, oh, they need a bigger outworld. 
uh, what out world should I get for them? If you have a good recommendation, I will see if I can get some products from the store. I mean, I didn't, I didn't really mind having uh, the the camera lenses on top and all of that, but with the sort of cracking over here, I think it's about time I actually get in my rush and and get something new. But I just don't know any big comp. I don't know companies that makes these big out worlds. Uh, so yeah, be sure to let me know if you have any good ideas on uh, on who to reach out to and. Uh, see what products they have in store but yeah the Nova Mesa Coco really they have an amazing response to food pretty much always and finally we are back here again it's only been like five minutes since I gave them so the response here isn't great that big but you can see the slugs or fast to go for the protein uh, but generally there are not that many ants inside we do have some ants like we have um, an ant right here and we do have some ants crawling around but generally it's not that big of a response to the food just yet so finally here we have the roach farm. It is very full because I just got a resupply of roaches earlier this week. So you can see it is, it is it's very full. We have, there's a lot of roaches living in here. Uh, one kilo have just been added the other day. Uh, but what I do is when I clean the ants, I clean the roaches. When I feed the ants, I feed the roaches. You can see here we have some jelly balls down here. Yeah, it's not called jelly ball. It's, it's called H2O balls. And yeah, it's just like pretty much small, yeah, watery balls. And then I also feed them this. Now I actually don't know what this is, um, but I just bought it from a store selling food for crickets. And I feed this to my crickets. And um, I tried feeding it to the roaches and they've eaten everything. So yeah, you can see there we have uh, we have rabbit food here. Uh, but on top of this rabbit food, I'll just put some of this down. No idea what it is, but uh, the roaches seem to like it because the, and the crickets also seem to like it. Quite impressively, just said no ants. Wow, do we have one? two, three, and four Singularis popping out now. Five Singularis, wow, I've never seen that many Singularis out. Four right here, and then the fifth one, fifth one is out of reach right now, but what, it's over here. So one, two, three, four, five, I've never seen that many Singularis out for before. Wow, that is incredible. This is of course the colony from the ant merchant. Snake is still in there, still fighting, doing its job. I'm quite surprised to be honest. This isn't the time it took me to give them more of this dry food, two jellies, and they still have balls from earlier when I gave the week. There's just so much more ant life over here now. Like, where did all of these ants just spawn from? It was all empty just a second ago. But yeah, the Nikos are out here, the Singularis are out here. This one's all empty. Well, now there are some. The Manicas are here. <laughs> what are the odds? We have Manica over here. I mean, the Manica, there's. I put food directly on the nest, but the manicas over here, and uh, yeah, I always love following the naturalistic setup because it is, it is just different watching all of the different colonies, um, come around together. The the singularities will just kick away from that, uh, from that protein or that uh, sugar right here, which is very funny because there's no fighting with the, uh, with the protein, but there's a lot of fighting with the jelly. That's that's, that's what the ants like. And singularities, there's plenty of other areas with jelly, like there's. Jelly right there. And there's also jelly down there somewhere. There's even jelly right there. And yet you go where all of the other ants are. I've actually just done the outro, but uh, here we are. The snake has been able to take the entire thing down. So would you look at that massive bump? It's been taken care of. The snakes have gone and done it. Either way, guys, I don't know how long this video is. It's been like, normally this maintenance, I can I can take it in around 45 minutes if, if I just turn off, I turn off, just turn on the music and just choo -choo -choo. Uh, But yeah, you've seen the stream from the other weeks. If perhaps it takes two hours when I do the streams. No idea how long it took today. I still need to feed the um, stigmatoma, but I'll do a video about that. So maybe it's already out by the time you're watching this. Either way, that's been what I do for my maintenance. Now I need to clean up my little feeding area and I need to put the roaches back and I need to do all the cleaning ones again but yeah thank you all very much for watching this video I hope you enjoy I hope you learned something if there's something you think I do weird please let me know because I love hearing what you guys think of my work because you have a lot of thoughts quite often either way thank you for watching this video it's Sunday today so a good good new week for you it's probably out Monday this video either way bye uh. I don't even know what to say. That, that sucked that by. That really, uh, that really missed that. Bye. Oh, what's going on? Uh, what's going on? I can't. I can't hit my toe. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all in another video. Bye.